Hi, friends. friends. And welcome to the Northern Nature Trade at the Canadian Bush Plain Heritage Centre. The Northern Nature Trade is a special kind of swap shop. You can bring in items you have collected in nature and trade them in for items from the museum's collection. Here's how it works. You go out in nature and collect some items and try to discover what you have found. Bring them back to the Canadian Bush Plain Heritage Centre and trade them in for items from our collection. The more that you can tell us about the items you collected, the more points that you will receive. Items in our collection include polished rocks and minerals, fossils and seashells. Also, please remember to leave bird nests, eggs, dead animals and living plants and animals where you found them because nature still needs them. You only need to take one or two of each thing that you find. It doesn't take much to make a great collection. Good day, friends. Today on Field Trip, we are here at Whitefish Island with our nature expert, Jacob. Welcome to the show, Jacob. Thanks for having me. All right, let's go explore Whitefish Island and see what nature has to offer us. It's a beautiful day out here. It really is. Ah, I think I just got bit by a mosquito. Oh no. Oh, and that reminds me, some of our viewers had a question about mosquitoes. How do you stop a mosquito bite from itching? I'm glad you asked that. For a natural remedy to relieve itch from a mosquito bite, you can apply an ice cube, aloe vera, or vinegar to the skin. But you don't want to leave it too long because you could damage your skin. After that, your bite should be feeling much better. Thank you! Wow, Jacob, these birds are sure loving these seeds. And remember folks, when feeding birds, always feed them seeds. Do not give them bread because it's not good for them. What a great day here at Whitefish Island. We saw so many things, including some little chickadees, some mallards, warblers, and 
a large, beautiful snapping turtle. It was amazing. Thank you for coming out with us, Jacob. Thank you for having me. I'll see you guys back at the Canadian Bush Plain Center. Hi, friends. Today on Discover Our Collection, we will look at some of the amazing fossils in the Northern Nature Trading Collection housed here at the Canadian Bush Plain Heritage Center in Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. Fossils are the remains of living things preserved in rocks. It can take thousands of years for fossils to form, and they can be millions of years old. The first fossil I would like to show you from our collection today is of a trilobite. Trilobite is the name we give to an extinct group of marine arthropods. Trilobites were among the most successful of early animals, and every single continent has produced trilobite remains. Over 17,000 species have been identified so far. The smallest species measured less than a millimeter from end to end, and the largest measured some 28 inches long. The next item I would like to show you from the Northern Nature Trading Collection is a megalodon shark tooth. Megalodons are an extinct species of shark that lived between 23 and 2.6 million years ago, from the early Miocene to the end of the Pliocene epoch. Hi friends, today on ID With Me, we will look at geodes with Maya, one of our traders. I found this really cool rock. I think it might be a geode. Whoa, this is really cool. Where did you find this thing? I found it in a rock pile beside my trailer at camp. Huh, what makes you think this is a geode? Well, it's really light and has a light te texture. Do you know how geodes form? I'm not sure, but I think it has to do something with volcanoes? Well, you're on the right track. Let's watch a short animation so everyone can understand how geodes form. They start out as rocks that form with empty spaces inside. This space can be formed by bubbles of gas within the rock and will very often have this if the rock comes from a volcano. Sometimes the space is formed by a tree root that was inside the rock but broke down over time, leaving an opening inside. Water from rain and rivers can then get inside the rock, bringing with them the tiny minerals that exist within water. These minerals get left behind as water flows through the rock. After a very long time, the minerals start to build on each other and form beautiful crystals within the rock. To find out if this is an actual geode, we will have to break it open and investigate what's on the inside. First, for this experiment, we will have to gather the tools we need. We will need a hammer and a bigger hammer. Whoa, that's a big hammer. Yeah. <laughs> then we will set the geode on a hard surface, something that won't get damaged in case we hit it by accident. For today's demonstration, we will use a slab of steel. Next, we will set the hammer in the center of the rock. Remember, when conducting experiments, to wear your safety glasses. Now for the fun part, let's break open this rock. Wow! Whoa. So there we have it. The inside of this rock has revealed that it is in fact a geode. This particular geode is made up of quartz crystal. Quartz is the second most common mineral on Earth, following feldspar. Thanks for bringing in your rock today, Maya. Thank you for, uh, so much for identifying, too. Oh, no problem. Anytime. Hey, you know what? Can I trade in this rock for some points? 
I'll tell you what. I'll give you a thousand points for your geode here, but if you can give me a little bit more information on this, I'll give you more points. Well, it has a beautiful hollow texture with some crystallizing quartz inside of the geode. Okay. I'll give you an extra 200 points for that, so that'll bring your total to 1,200 points. What would you like to exchange for? Hmm, well, I've had that beautiful shiny rock over there with my eye on. Oh, this is a beautiful piece of hematite. And you're in luck. This rock happens to be worth 1,200 points. Huh, well, then it will be a deal. All right, here you go. Pleasure doing business with you, Maya. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Good day, friends. Today on Bugging Out with Antomica, we will be getting up close and personal with a Malaysian jungle nymph. I'd like to introduce you to Mike. He's a bug wrangler here at Sault Ste. Marie's Insectarium. Good day, Mike, and welcome to Northern Nature Traders. Thank you for having me, Max. Whoa! whoa. <laughs> whoa. Could you tell us about our, our friend here? Yeah, this is a Malaysian jungle nymph. Uh, comes from Malaysia, and you can find them uh, throughout Southeast Asia as well. Wow, she's really pretty. Uh, why is she so green? Well, she camouflages with the leaves, actually. Okay, and why? She's very thorny. You'd say almost a rose bush. Yeah, that helps to protect herself, Max. Hmm. And what about this one? Why is this one brown? Well, Max, this is the male, and he helps uh, camouflages with the twigs. Okay, he is very twig like. <laughs> And we have these other ones here? Yeah, these are just some babies we have here, Max. These are immature females. Oh, they're very cute. Look at that. What, what do they eat? They really enjoy different uh, varieties of guava, raspberry, and hibiscus as well, Max. Mm. And what does this one camouflage as? Well, that's, that's camouflaging as a leaf. Hence, it's green color. Would you like to hold them, Max? <laughs> oh, totally. Wow. What, what's this lump on her here? Well, this lump here, Max, is an egg she's about to lay. This particular jungle nymph has the distinction of laying the largest egg in the insect world that we know of. Wow. Incredible. These bugs are just so fascinating. Thank you for coming to Northern Nature Traders, Mike. Thank you for having me, Max. Right on. Remember, folks, you can always come to Sault Ste. Marie's Insectarium, located right here at the Mill Market, to view these awesome bugs. Both megalodons and trilobites were some pretty cool organisms. Come on down to the Northern Nature Trade at the Canadian Bush Plain Heritage Centre to see these amazing fossils in person. Thanks, Thanks for, for tuning, tuning in! in.